Pasha Majdi from the Jefferson County Commission. Pasha, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Happy to be here. You see how quickly I can lose control of this show, Pasha, just in the opening minutes there, buddy. That's why these two hours get so quickly. <laughs> uh, have you have your home uh, radon uh, tested yet, Pasha? I think so. i got to ask my wife. She's in charge. Oh, I mean, maybe getting one of those free radon test kits. I don't know. If you travel on up to Martinsburg, you can stop at the at the Berkeley County Health Department, and we can get you one of those. You should test it every year, anyway. Gentlemen, I think there's news about the Jefferson County Commission that Pasha is <laughs> here to talk about. So, I I was trying to transition. I didn't want to get a, a cold stop on the two of you. The conversation you had going going on there, uh, Pasha. Let's talk about the the newest members of the Jefferson County Commission and the process by which that vote uh, came about. Can you take us? Through that scenario, yes, uh, we just appointed Mr. Kelvin Upson and Dr. James Cook, and um, they will be two terrific additions to the commission. Uh, I'll I'll get to know them a little bit better, but I have a really good feeling coming out of our last meeting, <clears throat> excuse me, during which we conducted interviews and uh, they performed really well. I, I have to say, all of the candidates who were interviewed were very impressive. Um, I thought we would have to kind of sift out, uh, you know, who would be competent and able to do the job. That was not the case. Everybody was competent and able, uh, and I thought that was really impressive. Uh, it's just that Mr. Upson and Dr. Cook really stood out. There was also a little bit of a, a, a trickiness to the situation because we had two governing statutes um, for the, re, for the re, replacement process to fill the vacancy. One was your standard vacancy filling uh, process. Well, that's something we've done. Uh, when I say we, I mean the commission. The commission has done many times because people move on. Uh, people literally move out of the county. They might switch jobs. They might just choose to retire early, what have you. That happened uh, just recently when I was appointed to fill a vacancy. That's pretty common, uh, and there's a standard process for that. But then we did have an unusual situation in which two commissioners were removed from office by the court system for malfeasance. And that has a separate process that we have to follow whereby uh, the party of the commissioner that is removed uh, it governs uh, which uh, how we fill the, the, the vacancy. So that was not stated very eloquently, but let me try and say it again. If you're a Republican, you get removed from office. The commission has to appoint a Republican to fill that position. Uh, so Commissioner Jackson was Republican. She was removed from office. We have to appoint a Republican. Uh, something kind of funky happened where uh, Commissioner Krause was removed from office, but right before uh, that took place, I guess you kind of saw the writing on the wall uh, and saw that was coming, probably briefed by her lawyers. I don't know. I don't have any inside information, but that's a, that's a guess. And she decided to um, switch parties and join the Mountain Party. So as a member of the Mountain Party, once she was removed, we had to appoint somebody also from the Mountain Party. Now, the tricky part is which statute do we have to follow? Do we follow the fill the vacancy statute or do we the standard one or do we follow the one where you um, fill a vacancy due to a removal? We decided to try and play both at the same time, and that was due to a legal requirement to fill the vacancy within 30 days, which happened to run out at the same time as the deadline for filing an appeal. I mean, we're, we didn't know if they were going to file an appeal, but they had announced they had filed an appeal. It was just a chaotic mess. We decided to play it safe, follow the law, and just appoint one Republican and one Mountain Party member. We did that. Kelvin Upson is a Republican. Dr. Cook is a member of the Mountain Party. Um, I had a lot of questions. I had a lot of questions for both of the candidates uh, from the Mountain Party because um, their uh, their party platform is a little wacko. Um, uh, <laughs> Doctor uh, uh, Doctor Cook is a very reasonable person. I learned that through the interview process. But you know, I was asking, so do you guys support government funded apartments for homeless people? Um, I I don't like homelessness. That's the problem. But part of the party platform of the Mountain Party is that the government should um, put homeless people in apartments that taxpayers pay for. Uh, I've got a major problem with that. I think we've got um, other solutions to that problem. I, I also asked about um, defunding the police, which is part of the Mountain Party platform. I'm not sure why Commissioner Krauss decided to join the Mountain Party, but you know these are some of the elements of the Mountain Party platform. I asked Dr. Cook if he 
if he supported that and if he was going to work to defund the sheriff's office, and he said no. Um, I'm a, this is me paraphrasing him. I'm a member of the Mountain Party, but I don't support every element of the platform. So I kind of went down the list, and to be honest, I grilled him a little bit. Um, but I thought his, his answers were satisfactory. Um, he seems like an open-minded person, a reasonable person. I think both Dr. Cook and Mr. Upson will be good additions to the commission and will move out of this chaotic period and move into a period of stability. Pasha, uh, Mr. Upson is, if I recall correctly, that he is retired military and the husband of former Delegate Jill Upson, correct? Yes. Actually, both new commissioners are military veterans. I think that's a good thing. Very good. Absolutely. All right. Uh, and th their terms will last until when? It will be for the remainder of this year. I have to do a little research to figure out, is it going to be November? Is it a little bit after that? Um, and we all, I'd, I'd also have to con uh, consult um, our county attorney on, on uh, Dr. Cook's appointment. Is that based on the appeal? So they did a... Uh, Jackson and Cross did file an appeal the next day, and that kind of answered the question that we had on uh, which statute do we need to follow, follow. But my understanding is they'll be here for a while, probably to fill out the year. It, uh, in, in some ways, it may be affected by how long the appeal is under consideration, and that's something I can't predict. Uh, but my, um, I'm not, I can't predict with accuracy, but a general guess would be at least several weeks, a couple months, maybe longer. If they win their appeals, either one or both, do they then immediately go back on the commission and the commissioner that's been appointed to replace them comes back off? I think so, yeah. All right, very good. Mr. Gilstrap. So while all this is going on, <clears throat> it, is regular order still also going on? Is there any regular business been done since I don't know, last fall? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The biggest issue we've had to deal with is balancing the budget. Uh, we have had, unfortunately, a chaotic regime um, during the tenure of the former commissioners in which during which we, we could not hire a finance director because, frankly, nobody was willing to work for them. And as a result, uh, the county commission misplaced $4.8 million, and there was no finance director in sight. And I thought that was... Um, a disaster. I thought it was catastrophic, and I was very critical of that. As the, at the time, I was a new commissioner, and I had no um, history voting for the budget in the prior year. Um, so I was the new guy on the block, and I kind of looked around and said, hey, guys, this is a disaster. I hope you're aware of this. Um, we will be solving that problem over the next couple of months, and you'll hear some really good news about that. Uh, that is, it's not it's not fully baked yet. It's not ready for prime time. But just a teaser, you're going to be hearing some good news about that in the near future. Um, we will balance the budget. We'll get out of this chaotic situation and we'll return to regular order in which we're doing county business, planning for responsible growth, updating our comprehensive plan with a balanced budget and moving forward. So give us a little bit of a hint. Is it just, did somebody just put it in the wrong column or is it, is it sitting in a drawer in a coffee in a, can? Yeah, in a, in a bag, right. <laughs> a big coffee can. It's a counting issue. And um, I'm, I'm going to let our staff lead on this once they have the full answer. Um, but the initial answer we got was that the rainy day fund was rated. Uh, and uh, I think it was done. I wasn't there at the time. But I think it was done unintentionally because we couldn't keep track of our money because we didn't have a finance director. We will be hiring good, competent people. We will fill these positions. We're going to restore order. We're going to move out of chaos, and we'll have a balanced budget moving forward. Mr. Kearns. I, and, and, Pasha, I have to, I have to ask this because I'm actually an accountant. and I, I, I didn't know that. I, I, I balance a three, $3.2 million uh, public health budget, and yep. I, 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 I have issues if I can't find a dollar, much less over $4 million. How could you misplace that? And I guess, I guess, I mean, even with the county commission being in a state of flux um, and not having how, – how do you all – how did you operate with that much of a not knowing where that money's at? And, well, it's um, a dramatic story. Uh, we had finance directors 
who quit in the middle of budget season, which is a, a red flag. We had a finance director who quit literally in their first week. I mean, they showed up to work and they clocked in. They looked around and said, hell no, I'm out. And the reason for that is because we had a chaotic workplace in which staff were being attacked, berated. And uh, in in some cases, we had uh, personal information leaked to a blogger who was going to who posted them online in an effort to try and embarrass or humiliate or uh, essentially ruin uh, people uh, and force them into resigning. And it worked. Uh, it, it was it is a it was a terrible workplace, and uh, it's shameful. And we're moving beyond that now. The reason why we misplaced our money is because we couldn't hire people who would be in charge of keeping track of the money. So we had uh, a system where money was uh, filed and tracked, but not we didn't have a department that was in charge of um, of overseeing that. And without that oversight. That's going to cause problems. Over what? I mean, you, you, losing track of a hundred bucks here and you know a thousand bucks there is one thing. Four point eight million dollars is a lot of money. So, over what period of time did this did this kind of leak away? I think it was our last year. A year. That yeah. takes a lot of work. Okay. Um, I think I think it takes poor budget planning and um, uh, lack of execution. And at, while this was going on, the county commission was basically at a stalemate. They couldn't conduct um, county business. So and, well, they, it, they weren't even meeting. Right. And if so you for, had, I think it was two and a half months the county commission didn't meet because uh, two commissioners decided to, you know, throw a college campus style protest and and walk out and you know place demands and say, well, I re I'm not going to come back to a commission meeting unless you do this, that, and the other, and. You know, wouldn't you know it? That's illegal. You can't do that. Uh, you have a duty to show up to meetings. Um, that's not just a matter of opinion. That's what the court found, and that's why they were removed. Pasha, how much damage has been done to Jefferson County's reputation, uh, not just locally, but around the state and the tri-state area where businesses are always looking to relocate? Well, we lost a couple of major opportunities already uh, where, um, and Mr. Kearns, I know you're in Berkeley. I think this turned out to your benefit. Uh, some private sector said, look, we're not going to deal with Jefferson mm -hmm. County right now. We'll go to Berkeley. We'll go to someplace nearby. Mm -hmm. And um, that that was, a, that was a hit. I am hopeful for the future. I think we're well positioned as a county. I think we'll turn around our reputation. Um, this is – I think you can look at this situation and see that it's anomalous. I mean, it's not standard practice. Um, the, the types of dramatic actions that these two commissioners were, were, uh, were doing are not – standard business practice and they're no longer on the commission so I, I just don't think that's going to be a problem moving forward i think we can turn around quickly but as far as losing out on opportunities that wasn't really the biggest risk the biggest risk that we had during that period was legal jeopardy so um you know, obviously they're in their own legal jeopardy right now there's actually a criminal prosecution that's ongoing due to their actions but the county itself and the taxpayer was on the hook due to legal jeopardy and what happened was they did an illegal vote in september of last year in which um, you guys know the requirements from notice right if you do a rezoning you have to provide notice to the affected landowners if you try to rezone without notice that's illegal and that's standard i mean everybody knows that basics with county government not just county government with with municipal government you got to provide notice if you're going to rezone somebody's property. So what they tried to do was they tried to I'm, – I'm, I'm using my fingers to make air quotes over here. They, they tried to do a repeal of the solar tax amendment without providing notice and without sending it to the planning commission. Those are two legally required steps. You cannot take away somebody's property rights without at least having a hearing, giving them notice having a discussion, and sending it to the Planning Commission for review. They tried to do that. And, in fact, I think they told one of the commissioners, you have to step out of the room uh, because you're recused. And then he, he did that, and they took the vote, I'm doing air quotes here, uh, without that person in the room, with the county attorney saying, well, this is illegal. You can't proceed with this um, because there's no notice. So what happened was the county was then on the hook for an illegal rezoning. 
in some cases, um, you know, that's morally re- reprehensible. It's, it's legally wrong. It's, it's going to cost you a few million dollars uh, in lawsuits. Think of your house, right? Let's say the county commission said, you know, your neighborhood, we're going to turn that into a municipal waste facility. I hereby declare your neighborhood is a municipal waste facility. Is that a legal vote? No, it's not. You have to, you have, to have a hearing. You have to let people know what's going on. You have to send it to the planning commission. And by the way, if you do something like that, you're probably going to get sued and you're probably going to lose. I think most people understand that. Pasha Majdi. Or, the, good, Pasha. I just want to make sure everyone, anyone just tuning in heard uh, what your name was here. Pasha Majdi is a member of the Jefferson County Commission. He's with us in this first segment. Go ahead and continue, sir. Oh, sure, yeah. And most people understand that when it comes to their house. You know, if the, if the commission says, I hereby declare your house as a municipal waste facility, they're going to say, you can't do that. And you sue the government, you're probably going to win. Now, here's the, the tricky part that most people don't know. How do damages work? Damages means how much the court is going to give the person who was, uh, who was the victim of the, the crime or the malfeasance. Damages work this way. If you invested X million dollars on the idea that you have this property right because the government announced that you do by a solar tax amendment or something else, whatever the amount you invested is how much you're owed by damages, right? So if it's a house, could be you know five hundred thousand million dollars whatever right but now think about a solar farm think about multiple solar farms we're talking tens of millions of dollars and by my estimate the county was on the hook for 50 to 100 million dollars in damages because of the illegal actions in september of last year that is a precarious situation Um, our annual budget is 34 million roughly if you if you owe a hundred million dollars in damages because uh, you decided to violate the law against the advice of your own attorney in public, um, that's that's a disaster, and that's the path we were headed toward. When I joined the commission, uh, I said we're not going to we're not going to do that. Uh, we, if you want to review the Solar Tax Amendment, and a lot of people have problems with it, and I agree with a lot of that criticism, then we're going to do it the legal way. So the first thing I did on solar was I referred it to the Planning Commission for review, and that's where it is right now. So we can proceed at looking at the solar tax amendment, see what the problems are, and fix those problems legally. That removes the legal jeopardy that the county was under. If we hadn't done that, we we received notice from a firm representing one of these solar companies that they were going to sue, and my guess was, I don't want to say guess, uh, the, the qualified, educated legal advice that I got was that we were in a bad position and we might have lost. In fact, we probably would have lost. And that would have cost the county, let's say, three years of our annual budget. We would have been bankrupt. Pasha, uh, we're just about out of time. A couple of things. Because of the district in which you reside, you are not eligible to run for election when your appointed term is up, correct? That's right. Do you have any desire to run? Well, uh, the Jefferson County uh, Republican Executive Committee will be appointing people onto the ballot. Um, last time there was a vacancy, I had friends on the committee uh, ask me to throw my hat in the ring. Um, if that happens again, I'll consider it. Um, my goal, I just want to support the Republican Party any way that I can. Uh, if we need the most help at the county level, uh, then I'll do what I can to pitch in. Uh, if it's somewhere else, if it's supporting somebody, maybe it's a, as a campaign manager, even as a volunteer. Um, I just want to help out the party. I'm a committed Republican. I think we're heading in the right direction as a party in West Virginia, and I want to support that. And you you were appointed, so you came from the outside in while this mess was going on in Jefferson County. A fellow by the name of Gary Lascalit on our Facebook page posted, TV10, Pasha, and the other two Jefferson County commissioners are corrupt. Pasha, do you... Uh, consider yourself corrupt? Do you consider the other commission members corrupt? Well, this is part of a coordinated campaign that's led by Mark Everhart. He's uh, the leader of a coalition of uh, folks who are very critical of the county. And um, there's actually a story behind this, and I think you all should know about it. It's been in the newspaper. I can send you the article another time. But this gets back to the finance issue I was talking about before. Uh, There were a couple of... I was not on the commission. 
there were uh, several commissioners uh, who were in contact with Mr. Everhart, and he said, you need to fire this finance director. And if you don't fire her, I'm going to start a public campaign that you personally are corrupt. And the commissioner said, I'm not going to do that. You're not going to tell me who to hire and fire in the county government. I don't care if you run a blog. Uh, go pound sand. So he did. And Mr. Everhart started this campaign, uh, and the campaign has been ongoing for a year, uh, if not longer. Uh, I think it happened a year and a half ago. I'm not sure. And um, he has several acolytes who attend uh, a lot of the meetings and make these accusations. And it's a it's a public campaign, and some people are uh, have bought into it. That's just how public relations works. But uh, this stems back to the, uh, some commissioners refusing to fire a finance director uh, because she was a Democrat. And um, Mr. Everhart thought that he could start a, a corruption campaign and say, well, the, the county commission is corrupt. And he's done that, and some people are listening to him. Um, I, it's bullshit, and he knows it. And uh, you know, people who choose to associate with him, he's a, he's a known bigot and a uh, uh, domestic violence offender who spent 30 days in jail in maryland you know if that's the type of person you look up to in, in politics fine it's a free country and there's free speech and um that's okay i respect that mm -hmm. but um uh, i'm not going to mince words with him and i think his uh, campaign to discredit uh, the county commission and cap and call everybody he disagrees with uh corrupt is uh, is full of crap appreciate the editing on the second turnaround there <laughs> pasha that first one may get me in trouble Sorry about that. Hey, have uh, have a good day. Appreciate your time this morning. Anytime. Pasha Majdi from the Jefferson County Commission, unedited apparently at 834.